Hello and welcome to this getting started with Corona Renderer tutorial in Cinema 4D. In this lesson we're going to be starting with a blank scene and adding assets from Chaos Cosmos and the Corona Material Library and working towards getting it like this, lit and nicely rendered. So without further ado, let's jump over and look at our blank scene. So when you open up the getting started scene, you will see something like this. We have our room. Now we haven't got anything in this scene apart from this room. There's no cameras, no lighting, no shading. So uh, we can have a look at this further. If we look at the layers and we can turn off the ceiling and the walls here. So just confirm absolutely nothing apart from the floor, ceiling, walls and the skirting and coving here for the room. So now we've got that, the first thing to really do is to set Corona as our render engine. We're going to come up to our render settings here and where it says render standard we're going to come and change this to Corona. That's all we really need to do there for now. So then we're going to come over to our Corona menu up here and we're going to come down to our Corona VFB which is our virtual frame buffer. Now if we come up here and hit IR, start IR, by clicking and holding on this render button, we're going to see in our bottom left that although it looks like nothing's happening, we are actually ticking up the render passes quite rapidly. So why can't we see anything? We've got no lighting in the scene. So I'm going to stop this, minimise this again, and come over and hit the Corona menu button. I'm going to add a Corona Sky quickly followed by a Corona Sun. Now the Sun you'll see here has a couple of options. We've got the, this tab at the top, this little button at the top. You can click and just change the angle of the Sun. And we click and hold the second one. At the bottom here, we can change the direction. So I'm going to have the sunlight coming from this direction into the room through this window and from this angle. Great. So now let's come back up to our VFB and see what's going on. So again, going to come up here and hold, click and hold, start IR. And there we go. We have ourselves a scene that is being lit now. So with that in mind, let's go and have a look inside our room. So I minimize this again and we'll go inside our room and just look over into the corner of the room here. And we'll just do that again, IR, start IR. Oh, but now it's black. Well, this is because there's no light currently getting into our scene. All of our objects in here, in the room, including the glass of these windows, share the same standard default shader, as they don't have anything on them. So I'm gonna come up to the Corona Material Library, just here, in the Corona menu again. Now inside here we've got a few choices, we've got plenty of different things to choose from, but what we want is glass. So we're going to just select a standard clear glass right here, I'm going to double click on this, and it will be added into our scene. And I can just click and drag this onto our glass panes here. Now so I can save this camera view for when we uh, come back to it in a moment. I'm going to come up again to the Corona tab and just click on the Corona camera. This will just create a standard camera, standard Cinema 4D camera, but it has a Corona tag pre-applied to it. Now, if you've already got a camera in your scene, you can just come up to Tags and then Corona Tags and add it in there. So now I've got this camera in position here. I'm just going to pull back on the camera here and then just drag this glass material over onto these glass panes. I'm going to jump back inside to the camera we just set up. Now again, uh, Corona VFB, click and hold, start IR, and there we go. We have some light coming into our room now. It's a little bit dark in here, and that's due to the tone mapping that is currently being applied. So in this box here, we've got a setting of minus five. And I'm just going to start dragging this up to raise the exposure and brighten the room. And there we go. We can start to see our room brightening and it's being lit by the sun and sky that we just added in. 
Now that we've got our basic scene set up, we've got Corona Render our Select Renderer and we've got some light coming into our scene, let's look at adding some objects to the scene. So we're going to minimise this again and come over to our Corona tab and click on Cosmos Browser. This is brand new in version 8 and it allows us to use the Cosmos assets. So we maximise this tab and we come over here and have a look at everything that's possible to add to our scene. So we've got a choice between 3D models, materials and HDRIs. We click on 3D models for now and look what we've got. We've got furniture and accessories and lighting, huge amounts to choose from. So for now click furniture. I want this to be a sort of a dining room sort of scene. So I'm going to add a table and I quite like this table here. But you can tell I've previously downloaded due to the blue tick and green import button. So this can be added straight to my scene. With the table selected, I can come up and click import. And if we look to the bottom right, we can see a box has come up telling us that this asset import is in progress. So if we minimize this browser, we can see that in our room there has been a dining table added. Now, currently we can't see that. I'm just going to come out of the camera quickly. Currently you can't see that because it's in a sort of bounding box mode. But we come over to it and we click it and we go on to our attributes. We can see the visualization method here. Now we've got wire bounding box selected by default. So I click on that. I can change it to a solid bounding box, a point cloud. You've got a uh, point the amount of display you want. So I can up that display. Really good for large scenes if you want to keep it lightweight in the viewport. But I want to do see the full mesh. So I can click on full mesh there. And that's great. So we can see our full mesh of our table. And we can start to go back to our camera and start to adjust that based on where our table is. So now if I come back over to our VFB here and start looking at that. Great, we can now see we've got a table in our scene. So let's stop this and go back over to our Cosmos browser again. And what else can we add in? So let's look at some lighting, say. Oh, let's go to our furniture and look at chair. So let's see what chair we want, a little dining table chair or something. So well, we can grab this one. So let's go and download it. And once that's downloaded, we can say import into our scene. So we'll import again. I'm just going to move this off to the side. And there we go. We've got a chair in the center of our table now. Again, I'm going to change this to full mesh. And we can add our chair there. And again, we can see how that looks in the VFB, constantly just checking how our scene is progressing. And you can see the light now being affected by that, and you can quickly see how we can start to build up a really nice scene here. Let's start that again, and uh, minimize this. Now, one of the other things we can add in is a HDRI, so let's, let's have a look at doing that. So I'm going to come down here to HDRIs. And a sort of, sort of daytime HDRI we can get. So let's look at this sun. This is quite a nice one. Day 34 here. So let's download that. You can see the download progressing. And as soon as that's downloaded, we can import it into our scene. There we go. So that's downloaded. Click on the import button. And drag this out of the way. And there we go, we can see we've got, now got a Corona Sky, same as our Corona Sky before. It's a Corona Sky, but it's got this Day 34 HDRI plugged into it. So I'm just going to turn off our previous Sun and Sky. And bring this back up. And start the IR again. And now you can see how the effect of that HDRI is in our scene. We've got more of a bluey tinge to the scene going on, and it feels a little bit more natural, maybe. And again, we can play with our exposure. That felt a little bit overexposed. And we can stop this render. So now that we've learned how to set up some basics in our scene and import some models and materials, 
Let's have a look at a scene that I progressed a little bit further with and just populated it with a few more items. So everything you can see here has come from the Corona Cosmos browser and the Corona material library from the floor to the walls, every texture you can see and every object in the scene has come from there. So let's go up to the VFB again and just have a little render of this. I'm going to start IR and watch as it progresses for its first few passes. And you just see how quick it could be to put something like this together when you have all these assets at your disposal, allowing you to focus on your creativity. So IR is an interactive render and it's not the final quality. So what we can do when you want to see a final quality render is click stop on the IR and click render here. Just click down and it will go off and do a complete render for you. Whilst the final render progresses, there's a couple of things to bear in mind. We jump back over to our render settings here and come over to the general settings and look at the progressive rendering limits. There's a couple of limits here. We've got the pass limit, which is currently set to 20 passes. So Corona will do 20 passes over the image, cleaning up before stopping. And then we've got the noise level limit. Uh, generally, a final render should roughly have a noise level limit of between 3 and 5%, um, or between sort of 5 and 7% for a draft render. And the lower this goes, the longer the image would take to finish rendering. So if we had a pass limit of zero and a noise level limit of say three, then it will just keep on rendering until it hits that that noise level limit. And it, irrespective of how long that takes. I'm gonna set this back to what I had before, which was 20 and zero. And the other option you've got here is time limit. So you could specify a time limit for how long you're prepared to wait for this render to go. And the only other setting to be aware of here is, at the moment anyway, is denoising. Now I do have denoising on, and this is something you can control in the VFB. Uh, if you want to learn more about denoising, do check out the tutorial on that. So let's jump back over to our VFB and have a look at how the render's getting on. Well, the render has finished whilst we were looking at those settings and it's looking very nice and crisp and clean and we got everything we would expect. So the only other really thing to look at and now we've got our image which has got been lit and we've got our models and we're happy with how it's looking is the tone mapping. Now we did briefly discuss the tone mapping earlier on when we were looking at the exposure but there's a lot more that can be done with it. I'm just going to jump through some presets here because they are a great way to have a look at just different looks that you can get to your image really quickly. So we've got some different looks to click through from bold to some different chilly experimental. Or if you wanted to go for a punchy black and white image for a really dramatic effect. I quite like this uh, photographic film it look, so I'm going to use that for now. And that about wraps it up for this getting started with Corona Renderer in Cinema 4D tutorial. Be sure to check out all the other tutorials we have on our YouTube channel. And we very much look forward to seeing what you create. That's bye for now.